Anna. Paimon just got a little fright because she's never seen a crazy place like this before. Who would have thought the best guide in all of Tevet could end up so out of their depth? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so anyway, Paimon just had the weirdest dream. There were cattle mooing constantly. Oh. Yeah, just like that. Ah, Ushi, were you looking after Paimon? Mm. <sighs> Traveler, it looks like the Conqueror of Demons is awake. I'm fine. Don't worry. The karma I carry is dangerous to humans. Keep your distance. Well, I have Adepti blood in me, so I wouldn't worry too much. Even so. What happened while Paimon was sleeping? How did Xiao get here? With a little help, I was able to find my way here. Conqueror of Demons, could you tell us what happened before he joined us? No need to be so formal. Just call me Xiao. Oh, sure. <sighs> it was a senseless battle. I came here looking for someone, but when I found them, they weren't anything like how I expected. Madam Ping says that you usually base yourself at Wang Shuin to guard the main road through Dihua Marsh. It's unusual for you to go looking for someone yourself. Are they an adeptus? <sighs> I'm looking for a Yaksha called Bosatius. Bosatius? Is that one of the five Yakshas, like you? I thought that you were the only one left. Aren't the other four... gone from the world? You could say that. But Bosatius's body is the only one that was never found. Yakshas deal with God's remains all the time, and we become tainted by karma. Over time, it inevitably drives us to madness. The last time I saw Bosatius, it was the day he lost his mind. He left. No one knew where he went, and I never heard from him again. But Bosatius was the eldest of us. He once told us, as Yakshas we will experience countless wars. Whether we live or die, we must promise to take care of each other and know each other's fate to the very end. Did he forget his promise because he lost his sanity? It's possible, but I did not. I am the sole survivor, so it is my duty to find out the fates of the others. What made you come to the chasm? Did you hear something about Bosatius being here? Did you know that 500 years ago, the beasts of Conria invaded the chasm? That war lasted a long time. It is said that in the midst of the battle, a brave Yaksha was seen putting up a heroic fight. But no one knew the Yaksha's name. But there were many more than five Yakshas in total, so there's no guarantee it was Bosatius. Wow. But you must think it was probably him if you came here to investigate, right? I am by no means certain and I didn't have any other clues except for this one. But Bosatius was proud. If he had taken part in that war, he would have announced his name. So at first, I thought the nameless Yaksha couldn't be him. <clears throat> Wait, so it was Bosatius you were fighting with? Did he injure you? Yes. No way! The invasion of monsters from Conria, the battle in the chasm, and Yelon's ancestor. I have a feeling that somehow these are all connected. Life is full of coincidences, but this is too much of a coincidence. Could this all be related to the fantastic compass mentioned in the will, too? What will? Oh, right. I came here because of a will. Maybe it's not something you've come across much before, but both mortals and adepti sometimes write out their final wishes so somebody else will carry them out after they've passed. 
It's known as a last will and testament. And this can be done at any time? Whoa, whoa. You want to write a will? Now? <sighs> it was no accident that you saw my illusion that day. This place used your desire to find me to create a trap that you would willingly walk into. Pure deception is easy to spot, but the truth laced with lies can be a fatal combination. What you heard were really things that I said. It made sure you heard my real voice to create panic. This one-way communication was the bait. If we hadn't managed to get in touch through the spatial rift, we may well have lost someone by now. Rather than murdering in cold blood, this space seems more intent on consuming souls. How is this even possible? Our opponent is very clever. It is not safe to stay here. Everyone, whether I accomplish what I came here to do or not, I must find a way to get you out safely. Hmm. I rejoin to warn you that it's extremely dangerous here. If you stay here too long, this space may well devour you. But how do you know? You might become a shadow of your former self, wandering the underground like a lost soul. Hmm. Sounds like you saw them too. Yelon, you're back. I've been back a while. I was listening to the conversation. I've seen some strange things here too. Objects that shouldn't be here. Strange figures appearing, then vanishing. I don't think any of it is real. So they're just illusions? At first I had the same thought. But it's not that simple. There may come a day when these illusions become real and attack you. From what you were saying a moment ago, it sounds like you know a way out of here. I can't say for sure. It's just a guess. As Yenfei said, this space is chaotic and unstable, but it has its weaknesses. By attacking the point where both spaces connect, I was able to create a rift and move from one to the other. So, if I use all the energy I have, I may be able to tear a passage out of this chaotic space. Really? So powerful attacks can affect the space itself. I had wondered if that was a possibility. Whoa, 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 whoa. But what do you mean by all the energy you have? I mean, it will take everything I've got. Wait a minute. When you said you were gonna get us out safely, you mean you're gonna stay here? You can't be serious. <sighs> I saw Bosatius underground. That's when I realized the horror of this place. A single blast can only create a very small opening. To send you back to the outside world, I may need to continuously channel power in order to keep the tunnel open. I know how to fight to the bitter end. I can do this. No. No way. Even if what you're saying is true, I can't agree to this. Paimon neither! It's not much of an escape plan if we gotta leave someone behind. It's only a good or bad plan if there are other options to compare it to. But that's not the situation we're in right now. I doubt you'd still be stuck here if anyone had a better idea. B but can you be certain that your plan will work? I cannot. What is wrong with you? You can't bet your life on something if you don't even know it's gonna work! It's not worth it! To conclude, I'm not agreeing to this plan. What if I told you, this is my last will? <gasps> you? <sighs> That's your strategy, huh? No offense, but we have no guarantee this plan of yours will succeed. Or even that it's safe. You said it yourself. Yakshas pose a danger to humans. You really expect us to accept your self-righteous plan just because you say so? The battlefield is a treacherous place. Every opportunity you take, 
you put everything on the line for. If you fear sacrifice and failure, you can never be victorious. I've been in my fair share of treacherous battles, so I know full well that you never bring up extreme measures like this until the very, very end. <laughs> you say these things in the hope that we will understand and accept them. But if you don't even know that your self-sacrifice is going to pay off, all you're doing is hurting morale. Besides, if you were really so determined to end it all, you wouldn't have given us the opportunity to share our opinions. You think you're oh so cold and ruthless, but I'm not buying it. And anyway, losing one of us so the rest can escape? <laughs> Some victory that is. Yelon, don't be so harsh. <sighs> Point is, it's not time for drastic measures yet. It's possible there's a hidden passage leading to the exit that we just haven't discovered. What if there isn't? Or if we don't find it? And in the end, I'm so weak that I don't have the strength left to sacrifice myself. What do you propose we do then? As things stand, there's no difference between sacrificing you and trying to find another way out, in terms of the likelihood of success. If we can't say that one strategy is better than the other, we certainly shouldn't be rushing into a risky course of action. Did someone say a strong enough strike can break us out of this place? Yeah, that's right. I heard ya. No one's staying behind to let anyone else out, all right? Enough talk. It's time for action. Come on, whatever you are. Let's see how long you manage to keep us trapped in here after I'm finished with you. Uh, easy now. Uh, why do you always have to do things like this? Shinobu. What happened to Ito? Did he pass out? Mm. The boss used up all his strength in one punch. Maybe that's the reason he managed to tear open a passage. <sighs> Let me see if there's any way I can stabilize it. He did this because he heard us arguing, right? <sighs> the thing with boss is, he just can't stand conflict between teammates. Whenever we get into an argument in the Arataki gang, he always goes and does something shocking to calm everyone down. <sighs> Today, he's done it again. He may not have known you for very long, but when he said he sees everyone as part of the same team, he truly means that. Mm. Another thing with Boss is, he hates it when other people sacrifice themselves, but he always seems to end up doing it himself. That said, there's a slight distinction to be made with him. When he does things like this, he doesn't really think he's sacrificing himself because he genuinely believes that he's strong enough to defeat any obstacle he's facing. Giant eagle alert! And wasn't he just doing the same thing Xiao suggested? <sighs> so stupid. The boss is hardly open to persuasion. Besides, he always acts without thinking. There's no doubt that he really thought he was about to solve everything in one hit. Ugh, it's not just him, either. The other guys in the Arataki gang are more or less the same. That's why they need someone like me to clean up after them. I couldn't stop him if I tried, so I might as well just let him do his thing. Besides, often his harebrained intuition is surprisingly on point. We might punch our way out of here yet. Uh, Ito... Please tell Paimon you're okay. I'm sorry. Don't be. You have nothing to apologize for. Both you and Yelan made some very good points. Still, if this was an Arataki gang issue and you were one of our members, I have to say I'd side with Yelan on this one. The boss definitely wasn't sacrificing himself. He firmly believed that we'd be able to find a way out through the passage he opened up, and he's certainly not expecting to be left behind. Everyone's important. We have to support each other if we're going to get out of here. Your survival is of huge importance to some people. Uh, no, to a whole lot of people. Aww, Shinobu. Everyone, let's all do our best to try and find a way out. 
There's still a chance. I'm sure we can escape. Leave the boss to me. Don't worry. <sighs> <sighs> Everyone, it seems this passage doesn't lead to the outside world, but deeper inside. What the? So Ito's efforts were in vain? No, it's still worth exploring. Hmm. I'll go and take a look first. Aha, uh -huh, I see. I'm with you. Uh, what? So far, I still haven't found the thing I came looking for. That magical device, remember? If this domain has the power to project our imaginations or the things we're searching for into reality, well, maybe I can use that to my advantage to track it down. No wonder she keeps telling us to keep going. If it's a magical device, it must be super powerful. Well, I can't guarantee that, but it's worth a try. I will find a way. Let him go. But if you're planning on going into that domain too, then come with me. After all, I'm just a lawyer. <laughs> we'll be safer if we team up. By the way, um, you and Xiao seem pretty close, huh? Yelon got a bit worked up just now, so I just wanted to apologize on her behalf. I have to say, though, if Yelon hadn't spoken out like she did, I'm not sure she would have gotten through to him. Also, self-sacrifice is something Yelon feels strongly about. She tried to stop whoever it was. From what I know, she's lost comrades in the line of duty before, and then was rescued herself. Maybe being a survivor is what makes her so against seeing other people sacrifice themselves. How can things ever be the same again, knowing that your life was saved when others weren't? In a way, salvation can also be a burden. If I were her, I'm not sure I would have done anything different. Oh, wait, one second. I'll be right there. Yeah! <sighs> right, that's much safer. Since Ito can't fight right now, I've cast a spell to protect you guys. Thank you, Senpai. Please, be careful. We will. Same to you. All right, Traveler, let's go. <gasps> What's this? Huh? Look at that huge disc in the distance. Hold on. Is that the Fantastic Compass? What? Best description you can come up with? It's way, way bigger than that! <sighs> well, it seems our theory checked out. In my humble legal opinion, that's almost certainly the magical device I've been looking for. It really showed up. But if this really is the fantastic compass, it's so huge! How the heck am I gonna lug that back to my office? <clears throat> I mean, come on, Yenfei. Don't give up now. Let's investigate the area first. <gasps> what the... Are they... Are they treasure hoarders? They look familiar. Oh, yeah. I bumped into these rapscallions a few days ago. <sighs> Easy peasy. Just like last time. You know, when I ran into them before, I was working on a big commercial case. The defendant hired them to attack me, just to get back at me. Eh, happens all the time. Luckily, I'm well-trained in martial arts, so taking them down was a piece of cake. But these are the exact same guys as I met last time. Is this space recreating scenes from my memory? Maybe this is one of the ways our adversary intends to devour us. Unbelievable. I thought we might run into some other people here, but apparently not. The Fatui? Whose memory is this? Ah, watch out! <laughs> Just as I thought. Yelon, you're here! I will take you down no matter how many times <laughs> you show up. Hey, relax. We're together now. <sighs> We mustn't give up. But can I out of here? I will recall. See. In the fin compass. That's just home. I'm so tired. Am 
amateurs, and still they dare to come after me. <laughs> You've still got it. Remember how I said I'd seen some illusions myself? Those were the same words I heard last time. The space seems to be reproducing that memory. Now that you know, at least we're all on the same page. He said the word fantastic. Was he talking about the fantastic compass? Yenfei, see that thing on the ground? Yeah, we tinkered with it. That's how we met up with you. I guess it's a miniature version of the fantastic compass in the distance. It has a close connection to the entire space. Hmm, it looks somewhat familiar. Let me think. <sighs> Another new space. If everywhere within this space follows the same rules, there must be another small fantastic compass somewhere around here. Osatius, I can't believe someone like you would end up as a lost soul underground. No enemies. Hold on. Wait, is the enemy hiding itself? Oh no, we should go help him. Stay back. This is my fight. Do not come near me. Filthy monsters! So many people have died at your hands! I lured you here to this underground space because I found your weakness. Hiding and ambushing from the dark is Bosatius' signature tactic. Die here with me! Huh? Ugh. How did a valiant warrior like you die here? Uh-oh. This is not going well for Xiao! No matter. I know how this ends. <sighs> Look! Bosatius is showing signs of fatigue! <sighs> Bosatius, Marshal Vritris, even your strength is finite. <sighs> but your illusion is not as mighty as you. This is not you in all your glory. I wonder what Rex Lapis would think if he saw what had become of the first Yaksha. Leave! I'll deal with the rest. We can't let the monsters get to the surface. Everyone, remember, we must hold the line at 60 miles outside the chasm at all costs. <laughs> Enough! Phantom, be gone! Chao, are you okay? This is my purpose. Don't worry about me. So your invisible opponent was the legendary Bosatius, Marshal Vitris? Yes. So excuse my stubbornness. Bosatius has been missing for centuries. This may have been the last time I will ever see him. He was saying something about holding the line at all costs. He fought here. The nameless Yaksha from the legends. It was him. But didn't you say he'd always announce his name? How could his name be lost to time? What happened? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe he forgot who he was. Because the karma you spoke of drove him to madness? Bosatius had already gone mad before he disappeared. There was no way of knowing if his memories were intact. He still took part in the Battle of the Chasm despite having gone mad? We Yakshas are not a race that thrive in peacetime. It's likely that he was drawn by the scent of bloody war. Slaughter is what we do best. Maybe it's the only thing we know. This battle confirmed my suspicions. As we had speculated, this space reflects information from people's minds. In other words, despite going mad, Bosatius came here. The illusion we saw just now is the impression he left behind. This space recreated him as he was during the battle. The way he fought was so self-destructive. He couldn't possibly have survived. 
Osatius' illusion said he'd discovered the monster's weakness and lured them underground. What kind of place could this be? Defeating Conria's monsters is no small feat, that's for sure. Guys, it could just be me, but... I think I'm suddenly feeling more tired than I was. This space is really starting to affect us. I believe Bosatius stayed here underground. But now he is gone, and only his illusion remains. If we don't leave, we may meet the same fate. Time to move on. You fought well, Bosatius. Goodbye. Looks like there's some information here. Shall we take a look? Okay, let's see. Hmm. It looks like these were letters written by the Millilith soldiers who stayed here. So, who's this Boyong they mentioned? <sighs> Boyong was one of my ancestors. The one who didn't make it back. You mean... Boy Young fought alongside Bosatius? I believe so. And the Millilith soldiers were their brothers in arms. I guess now we have a pretty good idea of where everyone that went missing ended up. Yes. Uh, so scary. What happened? Come on, let's not stay here. I have a gut feeling that sooner or later we'll connect all the dots, and then we'll finally know the truth. Still, who knows how this space is planning on revealing the answer to us. There's nothing here at all. What a creepy space. It has the feel of the abyss. But where are the opponents? Hmm. Your memory of what? The Abyss? So this place is created purely based on your memory? <gasps> it's... it's... Lumine, wait! Huh? What's that shiny round thing on the ground? The Fantastic Compass! In the other spaces, the Fantastic Compass was always partially buried in the ground. But this one is lying flat, intact, as if somebody left it here. Oh, she was just a figment of your imagination? So, she appeared as an illusion because you miss her so much, huh? Hmm. Yenfei. Are you sure this is the fantastic compass you're looking for? I think so. There were no pictures in the will, but based on the description, it seems to check out. Yelon? What is it? From the design and build, this fantastic compass looks extremely similar to the catalysts used by my clan. I just need to do this, and... <laughs> Someone's used this before. There may be a hidden message inside. Let's get out of here and find somewhere safer. Bosatius was the leader of the five Yakshas under Rex Lapis's command. He could control electro energy. Unlike me, he was both a formidable warrior and a talented commander. <sighs> now that I've found the fantastic compass, my work here is done. But if the Bosatius we saw was just an illusion, will we really be able to take anything we find here back to the outside world? <sighs> Within yin and yang, among the five regions, water, fire, wind, and thunder cycle like the seasons. Grasp the seven heavens from the ground. Open wide the three gates. All the world within reach. <sighs> 